Hi, Linda. Hi. Sorry, it's just we're in here filming a, an episode of the podcast. Hello, everybody. I'm Ryan. And I'm Jim. And welcome to the Concept Crucible podcast. Today, we're going to talk about the best thing about summer. But first, we... We really need to thank the UW Philosophy Department uh, in helping us. So this podcast is being filmed on our new Yeti microphone. Technically, it's being filmed on my camera, but it, you're, the audio you're hearing. Touche. So um, at the time of filming, we're not entirely sure what the sound quality is going to sound like compared to our other podcast. It's going to be great. Hopefully. But anyway, so this podcast is being done on the Yeti microphone, uh, and that is that was... Uh, purchased in part or supported by the UW philosophy department. Uh, so we just wanted to say thank you very much to our, uh, our alma mater, I guess yeah, is alma mater, the, uh... Uh, for helping us out on letting us improve the quality of the projects that we are working on. Cause ultimately when we approached them about it, we sold them on the idea that we're going to be using the microphone to help make things, especially philosophy related things. We told them it was a philosophy podcast. <laughs> well, we lied. We're not going to talk about virtue ethics today. I'm, we're going to talk about camping. I'm going to be working on philosophy podcasts, but nonetheless. So yes. So thank you very much. UW. Uh, you heard it here. Ryan's announcement of his upcoming philosophy podcast. I'm working on it. I've already got one episode drafted, like audio drafted, um, film or Ooh. recorded and post-production, I need to re-record it because uh, I was just practicing with it. But I've already got the first episode recorded and ready to go. So uh, sometime in the not-too-distant future, depending on when this is released, hopefully distant future. hopefully we'll get the podcast rolled out. But anyways, uh, let's move on to the icebreaker. Um, so what are some things that you have either done because it's summer or things that you're going to do to take advantage of summer? This summer, I am going to write 20 songs. 20 songs. There's a challenge um, that's, that went up recently. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Leslie from Copyright Leader, sent it to me. And it's write 50 songs in 90 days. And I don't think I can write 50 songs in 90 days, but I was, I'm certainly going to try. Um, but I think that every song I do write will be one more than I would have written otherwise. Mm-hmm. And 20 seems like a really good goal. I've already written about... We, we, this is not just me alone, but this is me with the cooperation of the rest of the band and everybody else. And I have... Uh, I have so far, we've just about finished four. Um, which is not an unreasonable amount, considering that it's only been a week since I made this decision. And so we're already almost 20% of the way there. Well, in all things considered, it seems like whenever I made things in the past, whether it's writing or whatever, once you get going, it's going to be easier to write songs. Yep. Like once, once you switch your mind over oh, into yeah. songwriting mode, you're going to have more, more riffs or more, um, more melodies. And then mm-hmm. you're going to have lyrics that don't fit for this song that can be recomposed into another song. So I, I entirely think that that's hoping to do an entire me. album about slash fiction. Slash, oh, for a minute there, I heard Slash and I stopped listening. I'm like, oh yeah, Guns N' Roses. No, no. <laughs> Although, Guns N' Roses slash fiction, that exists. That's a thing. Yeah, no, the internet's weird that way. If it exists... There's... Axel gently removes his shirt. No. Yeah. So. Slash keeps his hat on. Actually, Slash was in town this past weekend yeah. for, for the fest, and Aerosmith too, so... I didn't see it personally, but I saw a lot of... I also didn't see any Slash fiction happening. <laughs> But anyway, what are you going to do this summer? What have you done this summer? It's kind of too late that we're already filming this, but I just came back from a, my vacation um, up at the cottage. So um, depending on when this ish- episode is released, we may have just talked about unemployment, but I've recently finished up a contract, so I am no longer confined to having a day job. And I decided to take a week off from the bar and go up to the cottage by the lake. So I got some sun played with the dog taught him how to swim a little bit or at least got his instinct on how to swim working (laughs) how to not drown (laughs) yeah well it was fun to play fetch in the surf with him um this uh, and just like i was chopping wood up there you know it was just nice to um i didn't have wi-fi for the first five or so days so i was completely cut off which was nice that's what i wanted i wanted to get cut off um and just recharge uh read a little bit um, I had to do a lot of a little bit of babysitting with Sarah's nieces and nephews, so I didn't do the writing that I wanted or all of the introspection because we were watching kids between the ages of eleven to down to four, I think it is. So it's a bit of a handful plus a dog. 
Um, so I, I was looking to hopefully do some more introspection that I didn't get a chance to. But that's fine, whatever. I mean, I was still at the cottage. The worst day at the cottage is still awesome. It's still a day at the cottage, yeah. yeah. So uh, so that's something. And I, I hope to go up a few more times throughout the summer. Um, but let's see, what do I really want to do? Um, my bike got stolen, so I can't ride bikes anymore. <laughs> If you've seen Ryan's bike, leave a comment below. Yeah, yeah, it's a Brody Bolt Black stolen from underground parking. They're not actually going to find your bike. They're never going to find it. I don't know, the cops ever report, but that's not what this is about. This is, uh, I don't know, really, like, other than, than the, the cottage. I just, there you go, that's your thing. Yeah, I think well that's... Well done, you've already accomplished your goal. Yeah, accidentally. Um, yeah. yeah, no, So, but there, there are lots of things that are the best thing about summer, I think, as, as weird as that sentence sounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, some people think the best thing about summer is camping i think those people are wrong <laughs> but i appreciate the zeal with which they put themselves near bears and i suppose that i can at least acknowledge their interest in hanging out with bears Don't look at me. I, he's the one who's, who's like, I need to get cut off from Wi-Fi. I start, to, my head, my brain starts to hemorrhage if I'm if, I, if I'm out of Wi-Fi for longer than about an hour. <laughs> yeah, I've gone I've gone camping where uh, we we had to take bears very seriously. Like I, I've been camping in the bears mountains. are a thing I take seriously, and I live in the city. No, uh, but I'm talking about like, you know, ensuring that you put your food up in the in the the trees and stuff but uh far enough away that the bears can't I live on the fourth them. floor of a farm building try yeah. getting your food higher than mine uh yeah no I, I can see why people just automatically associate summer with with camping i mean i certainly do i did a lot of camping in, in cadets but also i did a lot of winter camping so i mean i've done all the that. all the four seasons sometimes in one weekend I've, I've had when we that. do our these are the best things in, in in winter podcast you're gonna be like the best thing in winter is camping and i'm gonna have to like just straight throw you out of the, the podcast aren't i no i hope i don't not. think i can throw you out of the podcast i'm a pretty heavy guy well yeah that too yeah well yeah. <laughs> otherwise you'd be doing the podcast all by yourself Ooh, this is jim it wouldn't be a podcast it'd just be a vlog at that point yeah but but, but a, lot of, a lot of people tend to to consider camping as part of the summer or, it is or cruising you know top down yeah a road trips yeah. i guess that and for me the best thing about summer is that it it, it lends people toward uh spontaneity mm. there's a sense in which and this is probably because of western culture and because of uh, the way we structure our educational year and a whole bunch of other systemic things uh, m music and media and movies and things like that but that summer is that time when you just let go. You don't worry about things as much. And sure, if you just want to pick up and drive to the beach one day, just pick up and drive to the beach. I mean, you can, you afford yourself more time. And it would be neat if we did that. But it's really hard to do that in winter where you, you afford yourself the time to get home alive. Because either you're walking and you're going to freeze to death. Or you're driving and everyone else is trying to kill you. <laughs> Uh, that's only that's but that's if you're a cyclist that's all year long yeah no if you're a cyclist then you have other problems is what i'm saying <laughs> like cars are are probably only slightly less dangerous than bears only slightly though yeah probably actually more yeah but um bears will notice when they kill you so when it comes to summer what do you like about summer like what's your favorite thing about summer i like barbecues i like barbecues because they um we're actually this week we're doing uh barbecue dungeons and dragons nice we're not going to barbecue dungeons and dragons like like parents in the 1980s would we're going to play dungeons and dragons and sit outside on a patio mm -hmm. and eat barbecued food and things like that but i like that it brings people together um like a dinner party except you're there for the cooking part and you get the cooking is sort of participatory and come and, and there's a lot of camaraderie around it mm -hmm. Um, you, it's, it's very relaxed, unlike a dinner party. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody's just sort of hanging out. Um, and you can often do lots of other things along with it because you get to sort of hang out. So, I mean, we're, we're going to 
play D&D and everybody's going to level their characters and things like that. And it's going to be really neat. Um, but I mean, there's lots of other things you can do with barbecues. So I really like barbecues for yeah. lots of reasons. That is, barbecues are probably what is best in summer. Ryan, what is best in summer? It's kind of interesting. I have a love-hate relationship when it comes to summer. I like... I don't mind the winter. I'm going to just come right out and say it. Like, as a security guard, I was working four to five hour this shifts. This man does not speak for 100% of this podcast. No, I speak for probably less than 50% of this podcast. Probably <laughs> slightly more than 50%. You're a bit bigger than me. Yeah, but so, I mean, I I was this, I, I am a security guard. And during the, the winter, I was out in the polar vortex at night. So in the wind, it was, you know, 35 below Celsius. I was out drinking during the, never mind. I wasn't even out drinking. I was No, so, no, but presumably oh, people are. There, there were a few. There was, uh, there was a couple times when actually students minor lineups at the at the bar oh my god but um so and i was out in the cold i I mean granted i was dressed for it i knew it was going to happen so i had the long john underwear and i had multiple layers of clothing and hats and and balaclavas and whatnot um but largely like driving wind in the cold typically don't bother me driving in the winter typically doesn't bother me usually it's the other people that bother me in the winter yeah um (laughs) you're not worried about yourself you're worried about everyone else yeah um but like slipping and sliding and whatnot usually doesn't bother me in the winter um but what i like about summer is i just generally feel happier during the the, Mm -hmm. during the the summer months or at least during the non-snow months you know when it's no longer gray outside or it's no longer cold. Again, it's not the cold that bothers me. It's just the um, I can't quite describe the it, but... temperature. No, but it's not the te- it's not about the temperature because actually I don't like high temperatures. I like it either if it's a, it's if it's a warm day I prefer it with a breeze, or if it, I just prefer it to be a general cool like twenty degree temperature. I, I can go down to fifteen or whatever and below, but I I don't like I don't like it excessively hot where i'm so, i mean i'm a big guy i don't really i sweat a lot i don't really like sweating a lot it's probably part of the reason why i'm a big guy is i don't sweat enough you know exercise but whether it's the vitamin d that you get from from the summer months you know just being exposed to the sun more whether it's because you're wearing less clothing everybody else is happier the, the flowers are blooming whatever the reason is i generally just enjoy summer because i feel feel better my my mood is lifted um which is again not anything to do with the cold the weather or anything like that it's not the cold of the winter that bothers me i guess it's just the kind of bleakness of it yeah so the, I, that might be the closest i can get to it the cold that I, I i will admit i love that moment in canada when the cold bleak grayness of winter is replaced by the cold bleak grayness of spring yeah but summer by summer the grayness is pretty much worn out for about, what, like a month and a half. And then yeah. it goes back to gray. Yeah. Oh, Canada. I guess the only thing I don't like about winter is the, the shorter days. I, I don't like... It's not the the darkness. It's just it feels like you accomplish less because there's less sunlight, you know, to, to compare it against. There is something nice about about being able to, to sit outside or whatever it's at 7.30 and have it still be light out, even though it is a phenomenon that I find particularly confusing. I mean, academic brain Jim understands how, you know, the Earth's revolutions and it, and, and all that work and daylight savings and it makes sense. And But there's some elemental part of my brain that's like, it, shouldn't it be dark now? Well, I mean, should it just be dark? I took the dog for a walk at nine o'clock last night, and there was still a light. I mean, yeah. when the sun was going down. By the time I got back from the walk, it was pretty dark out, or at least pretty. I, I try to keep my interaction with sunlight to sort of a minimum. I think that's just uh, a function of living so long in Hagee Hall and uh, in the math building. <laughs> yeah, but for the last like three or four years, I guess my office has not had any windows in it, and since we yeah. usually film the podcast. In my room, I, I have blackout curtains, mm-hmm. so it doesn't get a lot of light either. No. It, it helps me maintain my gentle academic pallor. <laughs> Translucent. Yeah. Translucent and hairy. Trying to get so white that I'm clear. Yeah. So it, it's it's really... So yeah, when it comes to summer, I like that 
feeling of I, I feel happier in the summer. Uh, I feel happier to be out in the light. But I mean, when it comes to the, to the summertime, I don't know. It's I enjoy summer, but I don't think I I still don't think I take enough advantage of it. I think as a kid, when my parents used to get us out doing things. You know, like summertime activities, going mm-hmm. to going to pick strawberries. Like for example, actually, that's something I'm going to put on the, the list. I told this to Sarah. Uh, this summer, I want to go pick strawberries because I haven't done that since I was a kid. Nice. We haven't. I mean, like my mom would take my sister and I, and we'd go and you'd fill up uh, whatever they're called, like the, the bushel or the quarts or whatever. I don't remember the size or the, the way it was measured, but we would go out every summer and pick just an insane amount of strawberries, and then some of them would get bagged, some of them would get turned into uh, to jams. And then some of them we get to eat fresh. Um, and I haven't done that in forever, but I want to do that. Just go out. And it's, you know what? I'm probably going to like get halfway down the row, maybe a quarter of the way down the row, and then absolutely curse myself for the stupid idea because I'm a six foot four guy stooping down to pick up strawberries off the ground, like near, basically off the ground. See, there's a trick. There's what? a trick to this. I'm hands and knees? No, 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 no. Not even hands and knees. So you lay down. <laughs> strawberries require a bit of stalking. You just sort of lay down and you pull yourself forward on your belly it's really good core workout for your core right so first off you're strengthening strengthening your core and you just sort of lazily lean up and eat strawberries (laughs) off the things like you're a very small giraffe or um dionysus bot from futurama yeah but i mean you just drag yourself along strengthen the core eat strawberries don't get a lot don't get super hot uh, I mean, you're you're gonna you're gonna get pretty warm because you're spread out. Uh, I mean, but you can get some shade. I think I should just somersault or tumble my way down the thing and try to grab them as like dexterity checks. That that seems dangerous, but I mean, you could do that. Yeah. It's not gonna do a lot for your core though. No, it's all about the core. That's what people tell me. I don't know. I don't actually have any idea. Yeah. Things we are not empowered or uh, in any way qualified to give you um, personal training advice. <laughs> <laughs> On the long list of things we are not empowered or qualified <laughs> to to advise people on mm. that is definitely one of them but yeah no speaking of strawberry sounds like a lot of fun i i we did that when i was a kid too um i don't know see i like the heat i am uh my spending my high school years wrapped in a black trench coat made me well adapted to heat and uh, i don't actually wear less clothes in the summer i wear the same clothes i would wear normally see thankfully the summertime allows me to wear the same clothes out as I do in the house, it's just in the house I, I wear crappier shorts. <laughs> but I mean, when I used to, li- I used to live with a, a buddy. Stay tuned for next podcast where we bring out Ryan's good shorts. Yeah, I'm no, I'm wearing my good shorts right now. Actually, the these oh. nice tan ones. Uh, I'm not putting them in the shot. No, but uh, yeah, I w- I was well known at a friend's house even when I wasn't living there that I'd walk through the door and drop my pants and put on shorts right in the middle of the living room wasn't even my house it was just oh yeah there goes huckle taking his pants off again so um ryan has never come to my house to, to do the podcast and taken off his pants yet but now that's the thing i look forward to wait no what's the opposite <laughs> live in fear of all right well just as long as i don't keep any clothes at your place you're probably going to be safe but um so yes the w- summertime does allow me to wear the same uniform that i do when i'm comfortably sitting at home fair enough um usually actually usually at home i also wear a undershirt like a wife beater so thankfully i'm wearing a shirt today yes shirtless podcast uh well we should do a shirtless podcast at some point i think that'd be a lot of fun if you want to see a shirtless podcast leave a comment below if you don't want to see a shirtless podcast leave a comment below in fact actually if you want to see a shirtless podcast leave no comments and that way i can assume (laughs) that you want to see them but no, I guess the thing the thing that's really best about summer is it's that time when everybody sort of takes a breather. Mm-hmm. I mean, even whether it's parents and their kids are out of school and it's and it's sort of vacation time. I mean, I'm not saying it's not stressful because it's for for parents especially or teachers who are taking who are taking time to do professional development. But there's a sense in which they are more in control of their time mm-hmm. and they're they're more in control of things. I mean, that's why so many people go on vacation in summer. It's that time when you do it, even though this when the the, the living here. The sensible time to go on vacation is in the dead of winter, so you can avoid living in the dead of winter. Mm. I mean, it gets to negative 40. If you can skip the country, just do it. But people don't. We go in summer. And we mm. go in summer because partly because that's the way we're programmed, but also because it makes us more relaxed. It mm. is the time when we are carefree. Mm. 
And I like that feeling. I want it to be all year round. Yeah, if I could have that uplifted feeling all year round without the heat, I'd probably be a lot happier. <laughs> so you want it to be like consistently fall? Uh, yeah, maybe mid to late spring or early to mid fall. I feel like the place for you to live is Massachusetts. Probably. I hear it's really nice, like the colors and whatnot, especially in the fall. Yeah. So, I don't Just know. Don't ever try and use your GPS to navigate Boston. Okay. Well, I hear it's a really good walking city, so at the very least, <laughs> yes, I will. Yes, it's a really good walking city. Yeah. That's a story. That's a packed story for another day. So even if I get lost, I'll be all right. That is actually the other thing I love about summer. Um, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's cons, and there's... Um, I have not actually been to any cons this summer, but there are a ton of them. I think the last one I was at was Anime North. But uh, there's cons, and there's community events, there's, uh, we, we, we've been running board game events, and there's a couple of video game things, there's places that are just doing live music, and because everybody's outside. Mm-hmm. These are things that are, I think, always going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have a really active community here in, in Waterloo Region, and these things are sort of always happening, but it's summer, they all come out, mm-hmm. and you can see them. And that's really nice. Mm-hmm. You know, just this past weekend, the big music fest, Latin fest... Yep. Going on in Uptown Waterloo. Um, um, the the Music Fest capped off the 11 days of um, Awesome, which included car shows and live music and an, a couple of late night art markets. I, I did a bunch of stuff there. I helped I helped out Twist Balloons at a kid, at a, at a kids event um, with, with Linda Patton Ripley. I did uh, board games with Nerd Night. And it's because, I mean, really, what couldn't I do with Nerd Night? Right. But... Like it's been a there's it creates tons of opportunities for the community to come together and it's easier to get people to come together because it's not cold out. <laughs> You're just not gonna let that go, are no, you? No, <laughs> I hate the cold. It is my dire enemy. I hate the cold more than I hate bears. <laughs> well, at least I guess Stephen Colbert then is hates bears, hates cold, and then you're the, you know, hates cold, hates bears. Yeah. That's exactly it. I'm 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 the the anti cold bear. <laughs> uh, Pretty sure Sarah Palin is the anti cold bear. Uh, maybe, but, I don't know. Regardless, yeah, I don't know. That is what I, that. But I think that we have covered what is best about summer. Yeah, there's probably a lot more, but given that this is the first in the quarterly series of the best of the season because yeah. i'm sure we'll think of things well if we miss something leave it in the comments below yeah. along with whether or not you would like to see a shirtless podcast yeah i mean if you're listening to it then you should vote for the shirtless podcast just to mess with people who are watching the video <laughs> i'm serious it'd be it'd be super hilarious i have two different factions of viewers or i'm okay with that yeah so i don't know it's gonna be interesting but nevertheless if you're listening to this it's true we love you better we do yeah but we should probably cut this short so people can actually go out and take advantage of summer yes why are you inside uh, presumably watching this on youtube or if you're out and about listening to us on uh, some sort of portable device good for you at least for being out and about listening to us (laughs) stay out of the sun yeah put on some sunscreen i've heard it's dangerous yeah it's dangerous for the fair skin academic enjoy beer if you if, if you if you care to yeah So anyways, but enjoy your summer months and we'll see you in two weeks for another podcast when we'll talk about, well, I don't know. Stuff. Stuff. We're pretty relaxed here too. Yeah. Anyway, I'm Jim. And I'm Ryan. We're going to sign off. Stay awesome. No no, No worries. Just letting you know that there's two men sitting in the the office over here. With lots of lights. (laughs) With lots of lights and a camera. Nothing to be weird about. (laughs) Anyways, we'll see you after we're done filming.